What's going on, everybody? I hope you're enjoying your early hump day Wednesday afternoon so far. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of the news that went on during the New York Giants press conference that they had this morning, as well as another notable player that the New York Giants are going to be looking to try and see if they can extend by the time we get to free agency. So, Joe Shane and both Daniel Jones spoke at the media session this morning to talk about the contract extension that Daniel Jones signed yesterday. <laughs> and Joe Shane as well talked about what he's going to be outlining in terms of going into free agency. Shane pretty much said that he said that the whole process with Daniel Jones went literally down to the zero hour. It was a very, very hard and egregious nine-day process with Jones and, of course, with you know, getting a contract extension done. But Shane is very happy that Jones was able to get locked up, and he does believe that Jones is going to be the long-term answer for the Giants at the quarterback position moving forward, and that if he had to do it all over again, he would have picked up his fifth-year option if he knew that Daniel Jones was going to be the quarterback that they ended up being. So, <clears throat> either way, Joe Shane understood the deal when it came to Daniel Jones and the type of contract they want to extend him with. And this is actually a very, he believes that this is a very good deal and it's going to give enough for Daniel Jones to be able to go out there and prove he can be the guy in New York with the Giants. And then he spoke a little bit about Saquon Barkley and the fact that him and Barkley are going to be meeting this afternoon in trying to work out a long-term extension as well. They have until July 17th in terms of the deadline, to work out a long-term deal with a guy that you franchise. But it seems like that the Giants and Barkley are still aiming to try to see if they can get their own long-term deal put together so they can keep Barkley here for the long-term as well. Shane also talked about potentially looking at extensions in the future for guys like Andrew Thomas and Xavier McKinney. That he's planning on opening up discussions eventually with Andrew Thomas and Xavier McKinney as a couple of other guys on this team that he wants to try to keep long term in terms of guys that he think are going to be long term investments for the football team going forward. And and also, Joe C Joe Shane does believe that the whole Daniel Jones thing is a win win, and he believes that Daniel Jones is a guy that could eventually take the New York Giants and win a Super Bowl with him under while he's under this contract for four years and $160 million. <laughs> But the main reason why I'm making this video right now is because of another player that Joe Shane says that him and his representatives have started talks on a potential long-term deal with in terms of signing him to a long-term deal. And that, of course is Dexter Lawrence, the defensive tackle for the New York Giants that is coming off a very strong season and was named a second-team All-Pro this past season as well as being named to his first Pro Bowl in the NFL in his career so far this year. Dexter Lawrence, obviously, was a former, New uh, former member of the Clemson Tigers all the way back in 2019. He was a first-round pick all the way back at pick number 18, 6'4", 342-pound defensive tackle, 25 years old, been in the league for four years, had his fifth year picked up, but he ended up having himself a very strong season for the New York Giants. As we know, he had, six, he had a seven and a half sacks in 25 solo tackles, 68 combined, with 33 of them being assisted. He played in all 16 out of the 17 games, the 17th one he sat out, due to the fact they wanted to rest him. He had two forced fumbles as well as three passes defended. <laughs> and he was an absolute disruptive force at the defensive tackle overall for the New York Giants. He pretty much was there the entire time and got a ton of pressures up the middle for the New York Giants and a ton of pressure on the opposing quarterbacks to pretty much force them out of the pocket and pretty much make it very difficult for the quarterbacks to be able to go out there and make any plays in the middle of the football field. He even had 28 quarterback hits in, 20, in 2022, as well as he had seven tackles for loss during last year as well. Dexter Lawrence had a tremendous season, and he is looking now at potentially cashing in on a big long-term deal with the New York Giants for the 2023 season and beyond. And if you look at some of the other defensive tackles and what they're getting paid right now in terms of their overall salaries, you got to look at Aaron Donald, 
who right now is making 31 million, a little over 31 million right now in terms of his contract, the 32-year-old player from the Los Angeles Rams, as well as DeForest Buckner, who is making around 21 million per year right now in about 4 years. You also have Chris Jones who just signed a recent extension as well for 20 million. And then of course Deron Payne who just signed that franchise who just got hit with the franchise tag at 18 million, a little under 19 million. You have Jonathan Allen his teammate who's making about 18 million and then you got Vita Vea, 17. Point seven, about 17 million and then Kenny Clark who's making about 17 million as well. We're assuming somebody like Dexter Lawrence is going to be wanting to go out there and set the market at the defensive tackle position, probably looking at making around 25, 26 mil, maybe even getting closer to 30 because of the numbers he has, because of his age he is right now, and because he's an ascending player in the NFL. I expect Dexter Lawrence to see if he can maybe work out like a four or five year long term deal, which would keep him in New York for around the 2028 season. And probably be around an annual amount of about $25 million per season. That might be the lowest point. As he's probably looking at DeForest Buckner's contract. And that's going to be his asking price of where he wants to try to see he wants to make an annual amount for the 2023 season. And it's going to be dependent if the Giants can strike out a long-term deal. Or strike on a long-term deal with Dexter Lawrence. If they can find a way to maybe... If they're going to backload his contract, if they're going to put it more into the middle of his contract, or if they're going to probably look to more front load his contract going into the 2023 season. We'll have to find out and wait about that as we go forward. <laughs> but either way, I'm very happy that the New York Giants are looking to try and see if they can lock up Dexter Lawrence to a long-term deal. And Joe Shane even said it in his press conference he did this morning during the Daniel Jones contract extension, that he is prioritizing the NFL draft. He's looking at the NFL draft right now to bring in his own players and try to sign them long-term, as well as he's trying to see if he can keep supplementing players through the draft to help go with the players they have right now. And Joe Shane is expected to start speaking with some of the unrestricted free agents starting today, like a Julian Love, like a Darius Slayton, like a Richie James, like a Sterling Shepard like a Nick Gates, like a Jahide Ward, whomever it is, he's going to start talking to them and he's going to see if he can maybe work out some type of long-term extension before NFL free agency starts, which begins a week from today. But as we all know, we have that NFL tampering period that begins on Monday at 4 p.m. where it's like a 48-hour window where teams can start negotiating long-term deals with free agents and they usually don't get start getting announced until and they become become official until Wednesday but don't be surprised if you start seeing trades happening if you start seeing free agents starting to negotiate stuff other teams trying to keep their own guys. That's all going to start happening within the next couple of days. And Joe Shane is targeting some of the guys that he's looking at on his team to see if he can bring them back on long-term deals and keep them in big blue going forward, which is a very, very welcoming sight to see because of obviously the camaraderie he had in the locker room with some of these guys. He's going to be looking to see if he can try to bring some of these guys back on long-term deals going forward. It's just going to be curious to see if he can find a way to keep some of these guys, or if he might decide that it's best off to move on from some of these players and look into free agency. Now that he's going to have a little bit more money to play with in free agency, see like what kind of players out there on the market he can look to bring in and help upgrade his roster, not only at the defensive line, offensive line, linebackers obviously, definitely know we need wide receiver help, interior offensive line, could use another veteran cornerback in the secondary, depending on what happens with Julian Love, Maybe another vet safety. And then obviously what we're going to do when we get towards the NFL draft, when we get towards April 27th to the 29th next month. <laughs> so Joe Shane, his main goal was to take care of his top two priorities. That was Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Jones is locked up long term. Barkley's on the franchise tag. They're going to look to lock up Barkley long term as well. And then now he could shift his focus on trying to get a deal done with Dexter Lawrence long term. He's going to see if he could try to knock down the cap number of Leonard Williams and Adoree Jackson. Maybe extending them for another year or two. Knocking down their cap hit to give him a little bit more cap in 2023. As well as what he's going to do in terms of deciding on Kenny Galladay. We already know he's going to be cut on... A week from today on March 15th, we just don't know if it's going to be a post-June 1st cut or if it's going to be a pre-June 1st cut. If it's a post-June 1st cut, 
He's going to have his cap number spread out through the next couple of years. If it's a pre-June 1st, the Giants are going to be hit with that $14.7 million cap hit in 2023, but they will be cleared of his contract in 2024 and won't have to worry about any type of cap hit at all. We'll have to wait and see what the New York Giants are going to do in terms of that. But that's just some of the news and notes coming out of the press conference this afternoon with Joe Shane, as well as talking about the priority to try to sign Dexter Lawrence to a long-term deal and the fact that they have started opening up conversations for a long-term deal with Dexter Lawrence for the 2023 season and beyond. So hit that like button if you haven't already and give a sub to NYGJFET85 for more news on updates and chatter surrounding the New York Giants. And always hit that like button if you haven't already and turn on the bell for notifications on the next video or short dropping on the channel surrounding the New York Giants. And you guys let me know in the comment section what you think about Joe Shane talking about opening up contract extensions with Dexter Lawrence on a long-term deal, maybe knocking down the numbers and the cap numbers for Leonard Williams and Adoree Jackson, speaking to some of the other unrestricted free agents, his goal right now in free agency, what he's planning on doing in terms of the NFL draft, as well as still trying to see if he can work out a long-term deal with Saquon Barkley while right now he's locked up on the franchise tag. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your hump day Wednesday. Take it easy and let's go New York football giants. As always, together blue, everyone.